We're going to go ahead and get started. I wanted to welcome everyone to tonight's webinar. I'm your host and moderator, Dr. Lauren Levine. Uh, as usual for these webinars, we got a great turnout, uh, well over 900 people registered. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping first. We'll introduce our speaker. Uh, you know, when I compared the, the list of people who have been on the webinar versus the list for today, every webinar we normally get about 60, 70 people who have never been on before. So uh, for the other 93% of you, you don't need to listen as closely to this. But, um, you know, the, the format's typically the, the same. Our speaker will normally speak for somewhere between 45 to 60 minutes or so. Um, our webinar tonight is being sponsored by Golden Dental. I'll talk about them in a minute. Uh, Kurt from Golden Dental will come on after the the main bulk of the presentation. They'll always talk about a special offer they're making, uh, about educational opportunities as well. And then we always leave about 30 minutes or so at the end for Q&A. If you haven't been on the webinars before, on your screen, you should have a go to webinar control panel and you can just type in your questions as you think about them there. I don't normally interrupt the speaker while they're speaking, so it's going to be at the end. Usually with this many people, we typically get more questions than we have time to answer all those questions. I go through the questions and try to combine some. I want to try to get to as many as possible. If we don't get to your specific question, I apologize ahead of time. That list of questions is recorded, so it gets sent out to Golden Dan, and they'll be able to follow up uh, for anything that we don't get to as well. Uh, first, first and foremost, I hope everyone's staying healthy and safe. You know, I work with offices all over the country. Uh, some of our offices are back where they were pre-COVID. Some are not quite there yet. Some are past where they are. But at, you know, at the end of the day, I hope everyone's staying safe and, and healthy. Um, and of course, I commend you for continuing your dental education. Uh, it's certainly a challenge this time of year to find time to, to do all these things, but uh, this is critical information and uh, we're, we're thrilled to have all of you uh, here. So as I said, I'm only gonna speak for a couple of minutes. I wanna make sure that Dr. Nazarian can speak for as long as he needs as well. Uh, in the next couple of days, you're gonna see a few things. First off, this webinar is being recorded. So if for some reason you can't stay until the end, don't worry about it. Uh, we are recording it. That link will be sent out to everybody usually within a couple of days. So, you know, be a little bit patient. We got to record it and format it and all that type of stuff, but it, it will go out as well. Uh, during the webinar, Dr. Nazarian is going to be demonstrating a number of products that he uses. Some of them are exclusive to Golden Dental. Um, as in the past, I've, been, I've had the pleasure of working with Golden Dent uh, for at, last, at least three or four years or so. We've been sponsoring these webinars, typically with Dr. Nazarian and Dr. Dr. Klasinski. Um, one of the things that for those of you who have been on these past webinars know is that we have great content and it's not regurgitated. Uh, when you, You'll see, for those of you who have been on, on our presentations in the past, you're going to see new slides and new cases, and it's always great new content. Uh, we, like I said, I've been doing this for years with, with Golden Dent. Um, they have an ongoing commitment to dental education. Uh, so we thank them as always. Uh, speaking of, of Golden Dent, you know, I get a ton of emails after the webinar asking about continuing education credits. The way that it works is that if you're on the webinar and you're here for the bulk of it, I don't know specifically how much I know with the AGD, it's got to be at least 75, 80% of the time. But as long as you're on, you will be sent the CE form. Um, as you can imagine, when we have 900 people on, that can take a few weeks, so please be patient. They always send them out. There's no test that you need to take at the end. There's nothing you need to fill out. If you're here, if you stay on, you're going to be sent the, the CE form. So with that out of the way, it gives me great pleasure once again to welcome Dr. Aaron Azarian back. Um, he maintains a private practice in, in Troy, Michigan. Uh, with an emphasis on comprehensive and restorative care. He's a diplomat of the International Congress of Oral Implantologists. He's an adjunct clinical instructor at the University of Detroit Mercy School of Dentistry. Uh, his articles have been published in many of today's popular dental publications. He's constantly listed as a top dental educator. He's conducted many lectures on hands-on workshops on aesthetic materials and dental implants throughout the U.S., Europe, and Asia. He's lead faculty for Amplified Dental Training, which teaches atraumatic extractions, grafting, immediate dentures, and all aspects of dental implants. So 
with that out of the way, Ara, it's great to have you back, and we're looking forward to tonight's presentation. Great. Thank you, Dr. Levine, and it's an honor to be here tonight. This evening, our webinar will be talking about predictable complex restorative dentistry, where we're using endodontics, extractions, grafting, and dental implants. So we've seen quite a bit of things going on with our aging population. We've heard this before, where the aging population is living longer, and if patients are living longer, then they're gonna um, start having more cavities because of dryness in their mouth. They're gonna start to get tooth loss. Um, they're gonna start to have a lot of different issues. We've talked about this on uh, previous webinars. But today, what we'll talk about in a couple of the cases are the younger generation. And the younger generation, we're seeing um, these patients are using more and more soda intake. There's also some drug use that we're seeing going on quite a bit. So in the past, if somebody presents with a situation like that, what would be your appropriate treatment? Well, in those two examples where the teeth are non-restorable, obviously we would take them all out, provide immediate dentures or some type of implant therapy. So if someone presented in my practice with a terminal dentition, then the ideal goal would be to remove that source of infection, place implants, and provide some type of fixed restoration. However, what if your patient is a young adult? Are we just gonna take everything out? Well, in some of those examples that you saw previously, we really don't have a choice. We do have to take all the teeth out. But there's gonna be some times in your practice where you may have to make a decision. And are you gonna try to keep the teeth as long as possible? Or are you gonna just extract everything? So today we'll talk a little bit about that. Here you see a great example of a patient who has some uh, previous drug use history. And our goal is to try to provide some type of reconstruction or rehabilitation so we can remove the infection from her mouth and um, proceed with some type of healthy lifestyle. So let's take a look at an example. Complex restorative dentistry. The first example is gonna show root canal therapy, some type of zirconia crown restorations and fillings, and then obviously some surgical extractions. So in this particular example, we had a 23-year-old patient with extensive decay and severely apprehensive present to the practice. Previous drug use was noted. However, she had been clean for the last nine months. So what we do in our practice, whether somebody's presenting with a few cavities or extensive decay like this, we want to collect the data. So we have a health questionnaire. We acquire the necessary x-rays. We review the clinical findings. But one other thing that I do in addition to these are I capture photos. Usually we'll capture an extraoral photo, usually of the face, and then intraoral photos as well. We'll also take models, whether it's virtual or analog, just so that we can capture the bite and really identify if there's any type of malocclusion of any sort. And again, we can always look at these models once the patient has left uh, for that day and study the model and see exactly what are the wear patterns? What's really going on? Obviously, we'll do our periodontal exam, uh, examination and reappoint for scaling and root planing if the patient needs it or um, initiate the prophy if uh, that's all they need. So our goal is to identify any caries, craze lines, broken teeth or restorations, gums, uh, any bleeding on probing or foul odor, any mobility of teeth, areas of wear, and if there are areas that need some type of implant uh, rehabilitation or tooth replacement, then we wanna identify those areas uh, if there's adequate bone and to make sure that there's uh, keratinized tissue in those areas. So when we take a look at this, what do you see? Well, we definitely see extensive decay from six through 11. Just clinically looking at this photo, we can see that the oral hygiene um, is not the most ideal. Uh, our guess 
even before taking the history would be some type of drug use just based uh, on the extensive uh, nature of this uh, decay on these teeth. We take a look at the occlusal aspect and we can see the extensive decay on the anterior teeth. We see some uh, decay on the posteriors. And again, we see the oral hygiene is not as ideal as we would like. In the lower arch, we see some extensive decay in the posterior teeth. In the anteriors, we see quite a bit of tartar and some buildup. So these are usually the photos that we capture for every new patient. And so when we capture these photos, the first thing is these are put up on the screen in the operatory. So usually these patients will look at this and go, wow, are those my teeth? Uh, I didn't realize that they're that bad. Well, this patient did realize they were pretty bad and she was uh, finally in quite a bit of discomfort. So she wanted to get this addressed. She wanted to get this addressed quickly and she wanted to be um, sedated because she was severely apprehensive. So our goal was to try to stay within her budget. Her mom and dad were going to be helping her out with the cost of this treatment. And so we're gonna go through step by step on what we did for this patient. The first thing we need to do is obviously capture 2D and 3D images. So using the CareStream 8100, which I have in my practice, we capture the 2D panoramic image in addition to a full mouth series of PAs and bite wings. Using the same machine, we also acquired a CBCT, or what we call a 3D image. And so usually looking at this, we see the four different panes. We have an axial view, a two-dimensional view, a cross-sectional view, and a 3D view. In fact, if you look at the lower left corner, you can see in the 3D view how extensive the decay is on the anterior maxillary teeth. You can also see that she doesn't really have that much bone. If we were to decide to go with implants on this young patient, that may not be the most ideal treatment at this point in the game. So is there different things we have to look at as dental providers? Looking at the 3D image, we could see some bone loss. We could see extensive decay. We can see uh, third molars that also have decay that need to come out. Here we can see with the axial view, if you look at the areas of six through 11, you can see the facial plate of bone is actually quite thin. So to um, place dental implants in this patient may not be the most ideal without some type of grafting. So looking at this and knowing that the patient has somewhat of a budget, but she has turned her life around and wants to try to have a mouth infection free, uh, free of decay and have some type of good self-esteem about herself to be able to walk with a nice smile. Um, what would be your treatment plan? Well, let's take a look at the 2D X-ray or 2D panoramic view. We can see that number one needs to be removed. Number 16 needs to be removed as well as 17. We look at tooth number 31, which has extensive decay. So that I would also recommend being removed in addition to tooth number 32. So already we know that five teeth need to be extracted for sure. If we take a look at the anterior teeth, our goal is to try to save these because there's very thin bone um, and to postpone implant placement. I'm sure in the future she may need to go that route, but because of uh, how young she is, our goal was to try to save these teeth and buy her some time. So our goal was to do root canal therapy for six through 11. We also could see uh, multiple areas where restorative dentistry needed to be done. So we see a variety of areas where we would do restorative dentistry and do uh, MO or MOD uh, type restorations. Looking at the 3D view, we're taking a closer look at the wisdom teeth in addition to the second molar in the number 31 area. 
And notice the areas where teeth were already extracted had quite a bit of bone loss. So those were not the most ideal areas to place implants without grafting. So the treatment plan that we came up with for this particular patient was the extraction of tooth 1, 16, 17, 31, and 32, root canal and core 6 through 11, place zirconia crown restorations from 5 to 12, do the necessary restorations on any of the teeth that were indicated, and then also do some scaling and root planing um, and uh, a cleaning for her. When presenting this to her uh, mother and father, as well as the patient, we use the DemoDent patient education model. And this allows us to talk about the areas that we may want to graph, like number 31, if she were to get an implant in the future, or how some of the anterior restorations had recurrent decay. And lastly, the crown restoration. So this is something that Golden Dent provides that allows us to further educate the patient on some of the different services that we offer in our practice. Well, if we're going to be providing some type of crown therapy, we want to have an idea of what it's going to look like, and we want to be able to provide a provisional restoration that looks pretty close to what the final uh, result will be. So when I initiate these cases, I always will take preliminary impressions and at least have a diagnostic wax up fabricated. This allows me to make a temporary, um, in this particular case, an eight unit temporary, literally in about five or six minutes, um, and polish it up and be able to, to deliver that. Uh, this saves the dental provider quite a bit of time so that you don't have to sit there and try to mold composite and, and shape teeth uh, freehanding uh, that type of procedure. So this is sort of what we're starting with. Our patient's sedated, and so our goal is to go ahead and remove all the decay. Here you can see we use the split rubber dam technique, and we're going to go ahead and just remove all the decay as much as possible. And as you see, as we start to remove more and more uh, tooth decay, you can see the teeth are almost like an eggshell. Uh, so our goal is to definitely remove all the uh, carious uh, tooth structure that's remaining. And so we continue that. In fact, taking the round burr all the way down to um, the gum line to the free gingival margin, you can see our rubber dam separated. Well, since we had a throat pack and I didn't want to keep replacing the rubber dam, we continued with our throat pack and started endodontic uh, therapy. And so here you can see we're getting our working length. And so one uh, device that you can use if you don't already have an apex indicator is the Woodpecker Apex Indicator. And so this is a very nice uh, device that allows you to very quickly get the working length as we're going through six teeth. Um, so the anterior six teeth, we're root canaling. However, we're prepping uh, the anterior eight teeth. And so if you already um, have uh, some type of endo handpiece, this works well to be able to get the uh, apex identified. The Golden Dent Endo uh, Taper system works very, very well. This is very similar to Pro Taper or Pro Taper Gold. So you have the shaping and finishing uh, rotary files, but the Woodpecker Endo Motor which is wireless, is definitely something that everybody needs to try. Um, it's called AI motor, uh, which is like an artificial intelligence, I would say, because of some of the uh, nice gadgets that are built into this. If you want it as an apex indicator, there is a built-in apex indicator if you decide to use just this handpiece. Um, so you don't need the separate apex indicator as I illustrated. I wanted to illustrate both for those doctors who may have one or the other. Um, but essentially what we try to do is our shaping um, with the um, files, we're usually going about 350 to 400 RPM with about three Newton centimeters for the shaping. And then the finishing, we're usually going in a range of 1.5 to three Newton centimeters of torque 
uh, as we do the finishing. So it works identical to a pro taper or pro taper gold, um, but probably I'd say one third the cost. Here's some of the highlights of the Woodpecker Endo Motor uh, available through Golden Dent. Number one, it's got a, um, a contra angle that you can rotate 360 degrees. So if you have those areas where it's hard to reach, you can literally just rotate the head of the handpiece. It's got a six to one contra angle and the head of the Woodpecker is actually quite small and slim. So it allows you to get into the posterior areas. Most importantly, um, it's a brushless motor. Um, so you'll, if you uh, get a chance to use one, well, you'll find that it's a very smooth output, um, creating a very nice torque. If you um, are using something outside of uh, a pro taper type of file, there's, uh, I think there's about 12 different um, settings, uh, whether you're using endo sequence, pro taper, um, any of the uh, uh, any of the uh, files that you're comfortable with, you can actually set it to these uh, different settings. Most importantly, again, you do have a built-in apex indicator in there. Um, you do have to put the little hook on the lip, and then the other uh, part of the wire actually goes right into the endo handpiece, and you have a quick apex indicator. So this works very, very well. Uh, I definitely recommend taking a look at the Golden Dent website so you can see how this functions. So we use the Golden Taper Rotary File System again, and so we're just gonna go through our sequence. Here you can see exactly the sequence we're using. You can see uh, because of the severe amount of decay at the gum line, uh, our rubber dam snap, so we went ahead and just used uh, our throat pack um, to isolate the area. And so we're gonna go through first the shaping files, and then we're gonna use our finishing files. And so here you can see we've removed uh, the majority of the decay. We're gonna go ahead and go through our file system. We're gonna rinse in between each file. And then we're also gonna hand file to make sure we remove any debris. This is a uh, Chlor Extra, which is a 6% sodium hypochlorite rinse that I like to use. Um, it's from Vista. It works quite well. And in addition to that, I like to use the smear off, which removes both the smear layer and bacteria. Um, you get great chelation from this. Um, it optimizes the smear layer removal. Um, and most importantly, this does not create a precipitate when mixed with sodium chloride. So um, it, it works very, very good. Um, so you don't have to use a separate rinse um, when uh, used uh, with the sodium hypochlorite. These are usually the different types of probes or syringes that I like to use. These are also from Vista. Uh, my go-to usually is the Vista probe 27 gauge and usually I have either a 3cc or a 6cc syringe um, pre-filled with the two different solutions. Once we've filed through the whole system we're going to go ahead and use our paper point, points to uh, dry the canals and we'll use a single cone and here we have the sealer that we're using from Diadent this is called Dia Pro Seal. Um, it has excellent sealing ability. It's essentially a two component epoxy resin based system. It's got great adhesion to gutta percha and dentin. It's got very good flow. So I'll usually use a lentilo and uh, spiral that into the canal. It's got a high pH value. It's got an excellent antimicrobial activity. It's uh, got low solubility, so it's not gonna degrade it's very uh, highly biocompatible. So if you had a little sealer that was expressed out the apex, it's not gonna create a problem. And most importantly, it's got excellent radio opacity. So when you look at it on an X-ray, you see that it's radio opaque. So once we've done our endo, our goal is to remove some of the gutta percha. Usually we're going about two thirds down the canal. Um, so we wanna uh, leave about a third of the gutta percha for the apical seal. And so this is um, the Glassex 
Plus from Norden, who is distributed also from Golden Dent. And so here you can see we're just measuring and making sure that we have the appropriate length and the appropriate sizes to build these teeth up. And so we're going to go ahead and cement these in with Maxim Elite, which is a self-etch, self-adhesive resin cement. This is from Kerr. This is my go-to for the fiber post. And then we're going to use the Wago, Kerr, uh, Wago Core, excuse me, zirconium infused composite buildup. So you all may remember the Wago Fill, which is a zirconium infused composite restoration. And so in the development of this, we decided let's go with a white opaque shade so we can clearly tell where the core is, have the zirconia um, silica particles in there so it's going to provide strength and radio opacity and just do an incremental uh, buildup and uh, curing of three to four millimeters of depth. And so here you can see our buildup with the fiber posts. We've prepared the uh, teeth. And so with the wax up, you also get a clear template and the hole on the facial, lingual, and incisal aspects are so that you can measure with a probe to uh, ensure that you have accurate reduction. Our goal then is to take impressions. Here's the Panasil, uh, heavy and light from Kettenbach. And so we took an impression. We took our bite. We already have the opposing arch. And then using this temporary material also from Kettenbach, we fabricated uh, provisional restoration. So again, this is all being done in one visit while the patient is sedated. Our goal now, once we have done the root canals and the cores and the preparations, is to remove the wisdom teeth um, and a tooth number 31. So we never want to start with the extractions because things start to get a little messy in there. We don't want to start taking impressions with uh, sockets and, and things like that. So my goal usually when I'm doing these um, larger cases is to start with the restorative and then end with the surgical treatment. So since we're gonna be doing uh, surgical treatment, we're gonna utilize our surgical kit from Golden Dent. This way we have all our instruments necessary. This is the wedge that I like to use. This is a great um, pre-step to your atraumatic extraction process. It's got a sharp and thin tip, which is designed to be pushed apically between the uh, remaining tooth and the bone. And by creating just a slight rotation, you get quite a bit of uh, mobility with the teeth, and then you can go ahead and use uh, any type of forcep that you prefer. These are the Golden Force series. These work very well. Obviously, for the wisdom teeth, we're not going to use the physics forceps. Those are um, positioned too far back to use the physics forceps. So this is a very nice addition to their armamentarium, the Golden Force series, where you have an anterior forcep, an upper lower forcep, you have forceps for root tips, you have ash forceps and uh, um, molar forceps. And so in the areas where we remove the wisdom teeth, we place the BioViva. Obviously we're not gonna be placing graft material in those areas. Um, and in the one area where we had tooth number 31 removed, just in case this patient decided she wanna go with implant therapy, we um, place the Osteogen grafting material. So the Osteogen plugs are a great affordable way to cl clinically deliver bone graft, especially when you have uh, the four walls of the socket still intact, which we did. Um, the great thing is no membrane is required and you don't need to have primary closure. The BioViva is great to provide a hemostatic wound dressing it does uh, promote optimal healing and it helps prevent dry socket. So I definitely recommend these two products as well. And so you can see in one visit, we were able to accomplish the root canal cores and the anterior six teeth. We were able to prep the anterior eight teeth. We were able to further extract all the wisdom teeth as well as tooth number 31. And then we would have her come back for the restorative uh, dentistry, we just didn't have enough time. I didn't want her sedated too long. 
One um, thing that I really like to uh, administer my patients is Decadron. So dexamethasone at four milligrams really helps with any type of inflammation. Uh, I usually use this whenever we're doing a root canal um, or we're extracting teeth. We give it to the patient before the procedure and this helps um, reduce any type of inflammation. So this is a nice pearl to take to your practice. So we're gonna forward the impressions, the bite, um, the wax up uh, to the laboratory. And from there, they start uh, planning digitally uh, what the restorations will be. And so usually the laboratory will send me these types of images and will further fine tune these uh, restorations. And so these are from Arrowhead Dental Lab. These are the Z Prime from Ivoclar Vivadent. So it's a zirconia restoration, but it's got um, sort of different hues of color in there. Um, so it's sort of like a multi-layer zirconia restoration and they work very well. When the patient presented three weeks post-operatively, you can see her gums healed a little, a little bit. Um, and so our goal was to go ahead and anesthetize and remove the provisional restorations, clean the restorations of any temporary cement, and then cement these crown restorations once they've been verified for appropriate fit and occlusion. And so the Nexus RMGI, which is the resin modified glass anomer from Kerr, is a really nice one. Uh, two other cements that uh, you can use as well that I, I like as well is Fujisem from GC, um, and then Reliax is also another good one from 3M. And so this is immediately after cleanup. And so being able to take your patient from A to Z really allows you to be able to provide comprehensive dentistry for your patients um, and to be able to restore them. So this was sort of an extreme case uh, that I illustrated. Let's go to a case where we don't have so much decay, but where we use a combination approach. Before we do that, I do want to go into cores, pins, and posts, because I think it's important to understand the essentials of these. So the purpose of a post, the post does not strengthen the two structure. Let me repeat, the post does not strengthen the two structure. The post provides adequate retention for the core buildup and as an anchor for the crown replacement. So a lot of times people will say, well, the post is gonna make the tooth stronger. It, it really doesn't. In fact, it just provides adequate retention for the core buildup. When uh, placing a post, there should be ideal distribution. Ideal distribution meaning we want an apical seal still of about three to four millimeters, depending on how long the root is. And we want about two thirds of the root to be the post. So we don't want a short little tiny post in, uh, in a long tooth, obviously. We want that post to go down about two thirds the root length. Most importantly, and this is where I see a lot of uh, um, doctors where their post may break or the crown may break off, is that they don't create a feral effect. If you all notice in the last patient's case, I went quite a bit under the gum line, and obviously we want to uh, keep note of uh, our, our biologic width. If we find that we're impeding on biologic width, then we would have to do some osseous contouring. However, it is essential to have a feral effect. Otherwise, if the crown is just sitting on the core, then there's a high probability that's, that that's going to break off. So again, Ideal distribution, we want two thirds the length of the root to be the post, one third to be the apical seal of the gutta percha, and it's essential that we have some type of feral effect. Well, let's take a look at different types of material designs and shapes. So we have fiber, material, stainless steel, or titanium. The designs can be active, passive, or hybrid, and the shapes 
are either parallel, tapered, or multi-stage. So let's take a look at materials. Fiber reinforcement gives us enhanced aesthetics. Although those teeth in the previous case were severely broken down and there wasn't much tooth structure left, my goal was still to use fiber reinforcement because we were in the anterior portion of the mouth. We're in the aesthetic zone. And even though we're using zirconia restorations, if you're using a titanium or stainless steel post, then those teeth would probably have a gray hue. So that's one of the reasons why I prefer to go with the fiber reinforced um, posts in the anterior area. Also, they are easy to use and remove if the patient ever were to need retreatment. Um, and the other example would be stainless steel. I don't think many people are using stainless steel anymore because you do get corrosive products from it, but it is another different type of post material. And lastly, we have titanium. Titanium has got good mechanical properties, very good biocompatibility. Aesthetics are not satisfactory. Um, it can potentially cause damage to the remaining tooth structure, um, depending on the situation. Um, usually these are cemented with either zinc phosphate or resin modified glass animer. Usually I find I'm using a titanium post more in the posterior regions um, as compared to the anterior region. If we compare metal versus fiber, the metal, the coronal impact is transmitted to the remaining tooth, uh, where fiber, the coronal impact is dispersed through the post, alleviating the force on the remaining tooth. So you don't get the vertical fractures with the fiber post. If anything, you may get the fiber post that breaks, but not the tooth that's gonna vertically fracture. If we look at designs, we have active designs, we have passive designs, and usually I'm going more with passive uh, designs, and then we obviously have hybrid. Hybrid is using some type of mechanical retention as well as cement retention. Um, these are usually used for severely broken down teeth where you don't wanna just rely on the cement that is uh, holding the post in place. Again, uh, I usually am going more with the fiber posts in the anterior region, and then I'm going with the metal posts in the posterior region. As far as shapes, we have parallel. We have tapered, which usually is my go-to. You're removing less uh, tooth structure. And then we have the multi-stage. I've seen a lot of the multi-stage um, from um, previous dental providers on patients that present. And usually the cement has eroded away, but the active mechanical component of the posts are still intact. However, there's leakage and there's severe decay. So I'm not a big advocate of the multi-stage if you don't need to. So let's take a look at the examples again. If we're looking at anything in the aesthetic zone, um, then usually I'm going with a fiber post. In this patient's case, you can see the other teeth were not restored. We want to place uh, some things like, that's like an Emacs crown that's translucent. So our goal was to not place a metal post. You can see in this example, again, we placed the Glass 6 Plus from Golden Dent, and you can see the preparation in the lower arch, or in the lower photo, excuse me. Metal posts. Metal posts I'm usually using in the non-aesthetic zone. Here you can see the metal post used, um, as well as the uh, Wago core. You can see the opaqueness and the bleach shade or white shade of it. And then another thing that I also like to use are titanium pins. Titanium pins work well when a posterior tooth is severely broken down. However, you really don't want to put a post in there and cause a vertical fracture. So I actually do use titanium pins quite a bit. If I'm using them, usually I will create sort of a scaffold to um, retain the core. And this way, um, it's distributing the force evenly and not causing a vertical fracture in the tooth. 
it's been a very long time since I've used a CAS post core. I found in the past we we found a lot of um, vertical fractures, and so in those situations, I rather use the titanium pins. These are also available from Golden Den. The core material of choice again is the Wago core. It's a zirconium infused composite core material. Um, it's light activated, it's radio opaque, and it's got zirconia for strength, which is ideal. So let's take a look at another example. This patient presented to the practice, not happy with her smile. She said her teeth feel like they're moving forward and creating an overbite. She wanted to save whatever she could. She didn't want to just have all her teeth removed and have an all or four or all on six. And so we acquired the photos necessary. And so as we talked about, we have the headshot, the retracted frontal view, and then the occlusal shots. What do we see here? Well, we see abfractions. We see some um, erosion or wear. Um, at the cervical portion of the teeth. We see that this patient has uh, quite a bit of parafunction. The teeth are worn down. We can see several restorations that are falling apart at the cervical. And here we can see some failing amalgam restorations that are starting to break down. So our goal again is to acquire a 2D and 3D image. Here we can see we've sort of mapped out where the sinus is. And so again, this patient really did not want to go with uh, full implant reconstruction. So our goal was to provide a variety of different options. And so the treatment options for the maxilla, she decided to go with crown and bridge restorations. And the options for the mandibular arch also, she decided to go with crown and bridge restorations. So the treatment plan that we went through with was extraction graph on number 12, root canal and cores on five and six, implants and abutments on number four and 13 because we wanted some type of vertical stops. As you can see, this patient's a heavy grinder and all these abfractions, there's no vertical stop really in the posterior region. So we wanna at least give her some implants there. In the lower arch, we went ahead and did root canal therapy on tooth number 28 and 29. And then we did crown restorations um, on the anterior teeth. So again, if we're gonna start this type of uh, uh, case, we want to start with a diagnostic wax up. So these are the diagnostic wax ups I get from Arrowhead Dental Lab. What you get is a temporary matrix and a clear reduction guide as we saw in the very first case. This helps us plan, but also be able to provide a temporary restoration. So we look at the 3D scan and we've mapped out where we're gonna be placing our implants. We know we're gonna be taking out that tooth. So we initiate the extraction by using the physics forceps. And here you can see we've atraumatically extracted that tooth that had uh, a little bit of mobility, but also quite a bit of uh, decay and infection. So the next step was to place the implant. So using a toothborne guide, before we prepare the teeth, we placed the surgical guide and placed our two implants after we used the uh, drilling sequence from 3DDX. And then once the implants were placed, you can sort of see uh, one of the implants there. We went ahead and initiated the preparation of the teeth and any type of endodontic treatment. In this particular case, number five, six, 28, and 29, and then core restorations. Again, we utilized the woodpecker endomotor. Again, I highly recommend uh, you utilize this uh, wireless system, um, but most importantly, the golden paper rotary files. Again, they're literally one third the cost of what you've probably already been paying. Um, here you can see the apex indicator. These are some of the highlights again of the uh, woodpecker endo motor. The, here's the power station. Again, a very small head, so it's uh, very easy to access posterior areas. 
It's a six to one contra angle. And again, uh, the weight of it is more towards the head, not where the battery is, which really makes it very easy. Again, we're gonna start first with our shaping files, uh, just like the ProTaper or the ProTaper Gold. And then we're going to complete um, uh, with the finishing files. Once we've prepared all the top teeth, we're gonna go ahead and reline this jig. This is also something you get with the wax ups from Arrowhead. This is the Panasil monophase that we're utilizing to do sort of a reline of that jig. And then once we've prepared the lower teeth, we're doing the same thing with the monophase. And now we have accurate relations um, by not altering the bite one bit. And you can see how that's been relined very nicely. So this jig allows you to maintain the bite and not have to do a sequential bite. We're gonna go ahead and take our full arch impressions using the Panasil from Kettenbach. Here you can see the provisional restorations that we've provided. And so this is just a week later, we acquire uh, the feedback from the patient. She says she likes the uh, size and shape, but she would like them to be just a little longer. She remembered her teeth being a little longer and she would like them to be even brighter. So we make these notes and send it and forward it to the laboratory. And so from there, they start to design the crown work. And so here you can see we had placed the implants. However, we're not gonna be taking the impressions for that at the time of preparation. We have to wait four months. So our goal is to deliver these crown restorations first, and then four months later, provide the abutments and the crowns on the implants. So again, this is Arrowhead Dental Lab. Here you can see the zirconia. We're gonna cement these restorations with the Nexus RMGI. This is what it looks like. And so this is what it looks like um, after we've cleaned everything up. As four months go by, the patient presents back. And so we're gonna go ahead and remove the healing caps from the implants, place the impression posts in there, take the impression and forward that to the laboratory. They will in return go ahead and send us the abutments. These are the jigs to position the abutments appropriately. We'll place the abutments and torque those down to about 25, 30 Newton centimeters and then cement the crown restorations. So here we have the final restorations. Again, if the patient were to get, um, or if the patient desired to get more teeth, we would have to do sinus lifts in order to provide that. And she was fine with this and she's been functioning just uh, very well with it, quite honestly. And so here's her final restorations. Here we can see on the 2D uh, panoramic view, you can see the root canals that we accomplished on tooth number five and six, 28 and 29. Obviously the one on 21 um, or 20, excuse me, was already there, if you remember from the earlier x-ray. Let's uh, focus on our last case for this last 10, 15 minutes. Patient presented to the practice in quite a bit of discomfort. You can see he's got severe wear and attrition. So we're gonna do exactly like we talked about last time, where we're going to collect the data, all the necessary radiographs, in addition to the photos and models. So here's our series of photos. You can see that this patient has a deep bite. So our goal is to open this up about a millimeter to two millimeters. There's a great uh, VDO gauge that I use from Conmeter. Um, this allows us to measure how much we need to open our patients um, by measuring the uh, distance from the pupil of the eye to the commissures of the lip and in essence, then that number relates um, from the bottom of the nose to the chin. And so these are some of the things that we talk about at our courses. We obviously don't have enough time this evening to talk about it, 
but I did want to share how we do that. So we're going to identify the caries and uh, craze lines and cracks, uh, any bleeding on probing, areas of wear, the areas where teeth may be missing. You can see in the areas of 12, 13, 14, these teeth have hyper erupted. You see large amalgam restorations. There was a recurrent decay on quite a bit of these. You can see some of the teeth that are broken down. And so again, our goal is to acquire 2D and 3D images. So if we close in on there, we can see some of the areas of decay. We're also going to use our 8100 to acquire the CBCT images. And so again, what is your recommended treatment? We don't want to just take everything out. Yes, the anterior teeth have some severe wear, um, but if we can maintain some proprioception by keeping the anterior uh, maxillary teeth and the mandibular anterior teeth, then let's do so. And so if we take a look at the 2D radiograph, we see the teeth that we are going to be extracting. Remember, we had severe decay on some of these posterior maxillary teeth, or they were just um, hyper erupted. So there would be no way to uh, restore implants in the lower arch without having some clearance for those. In the lower arch, I'm identifying the teeth that we'll be removing as well. And so essentially, we're maintaining the anterior six teeth in the maxillary arch. And in the lower arch, uh, we're maintaining uh, about seven teeth. Our goal is to place about two implants in uh, each quadrant and um, see how the patient does, does with this. If he further uh, wants to have uh, molars to chew with and says, hey, I can't function um, with just four implants in the upper arch and four implants in the lower arch, then we can easily add implants later on. So at our records appointment, we acquire the bite and we forward this and the impressions to the laboratory for a diagnostic wax up. This is sort of what it looks like. Again, this is from Arrowhead Dental Lab. Our goal is to go from first molar to first molar in the upper and lower arches. And um, that would require a little bit more implant therapy. So the patient said, well, let's just go with four implants on the top and four on the bottom. And so you'll see what the final result was. Here we have the surgical guides. This is for the maxillary arch. And here we have the mandibular arch. These are tooth-borne surgical guides. So number one, we're going to anesthetize the patient. Again, we're using the wedge from Golden Dent to uh, extract these teeth. Here we're using the Golden Force forceps to further remove them. And notice we didn't even have to section the teeth. So the wedge is a great pre-step for the physics forceps or the uh, golden force forceps, both from golden dent to help uh, extract these teeth atraumatically. Again, we're gonna graft some of these areas. This is the grafting kit, so we're using the curette to remove any granulation tissue. And so we'll place our toothborne surgical guide and start drilling for our implants and then uh, place our implants guided. And so here you can see uh, what we've done in the upper arch. You can see in the 14 and 15 area, we've used the osteogen. In the areas around the implants, uh, we've used the Goldoss putty. And now we can go ahead and actually prepare these teeth. Here we see the preparations of the anterior maxillary teeth. Um, I'm going to get um, control of the gingival tissue. Dries is a very uh, nice hemostatic material uh, that I like from Parkell that controls the gum tissue um, in addition to packing cord. And then here you can see I'm using uh, what we call seafoil towel technique so that when we take the impression or make temporaries, we don't have material going into the extraction sites. 
So all you do is position the C-fold towel in those areas, let it get wet from the patient's blood. And so here we're using the Kettenbach provisional restoration. And you can see how the C-fold towel technique prevents um, temporary material from going into the extraction sites. So this is a very nice pearl to take home. Again, this was a Siltec putty um, that comes with the wax up of the, of the actual wax up. So we're gonna go ahead and trim those posterior regions. Same visit, we're going to go ahead and prepare the lower teeth once we've extracted these uh, non-restorable teeth. In the posterior regions where there's no implants going, we're gonna place the osteogen. And so at this point, we'll place our surgical guide, do the necessary drilling for the implants, and then place the implants fully guided. And then if you recall, I was talking about the jig that comes with the wax up from Arrowhead as well, where we'll do a reline impression. This still maintains the bite. And then we'll further confirm that we have adequate reduction. This is the clear template. So we're gonna do the same on the bottom. And so this is what the patient is gonna walk out with, uh, the immediate provisional restorations made from the Siltec impressions. When the patient returns two to three weeks later, we're gonna go ahead and cement the crown restorations. So my goal is not to have the patient walk around in provisionals for four months as these implants heal. This is only about two and a half weeks later you can see the areas of the osteogen is still um, healing. Notice those extraction sites heal from the bottom of the apex uh, superficially. And here we see the lower arch. So sometimes people see this and they get uh, fearful that the graft didn't take. Uh, this is very normal healing with only two and a half weeks. So we forwarded everything to the laboratory and by the third week, we um, get designs of what the final restorations are going to be. So what they've done is superimpose the wax up. The design of this was um, manufactured from Denmat. This is the Lumazir zirconia restorations. And here you can see how their programmers designed the crown restorations. So these are the Lumazir zirconia restorations from Denmat. And so here you can see we've cemented those restorations. So this is within three weeks. You can see the crown restorations cemented in the upper and lower arches. You can see the areas of where the implants are healing. Once four months uh, goes by, our goal is to remove the healing caps and position the impression posts. Here you can see the Panorex as the patient was healing. Here's a bite registration before we remove the healing caps, maintaining that vertical dimension with the anterior teeth. Our goal now is to remove the impression, or remove the healing caps, excuse me, place the impression transfers. Here we're using the Panacil again from Kettenbach to take full arch impressions. So here's the lower full arch impression. So we're gonna forward the full arch impressions as well as the bite to Denmat to do the implant restorations. And so my goal is to illustrate both screw retain or cement retain um, Denmat as well as Arrowhead offer both. It's a matter of preference. Uh, I was using this for educational reasons, so I wanted to illustrate both. So on the left side, you can see screw retain restorations. On the right side, you can see custom abutments, and then the restorations would be uh, cemented. In the lower arch, we just went with screw retain restorations. So when the patient presented a few weeks later, we went ahead and placed all the implant restorations, torqued them down to 
uh, 25 to 30 newton centimeters. Here you can see the anterior retracted view. Placed our Teflon to um, cover the access openings and then either A, um, cemented the cementable restorations or B, plug the holes with the Wago fill. Uh, this way, if they have to be retrieved, we can just remove the composite access the Teflon, remove it, and then unscrew restorations. So here we have the final restorations. These um, were from Denmat, their Lumazir product, which is also a very nice product. Here you can see the final um, panoramic view and the final smile restoration of this patient. Again, ideally, we would have preferred to add another implant to let's say the three area, and then maybe also um, another one in the 14 and uh, 19 area, but the patient was very pleased with this, and so we can always upgrade him in the future if necessary. Well, I appreciate everybody's uh, attention. We do have our endo for the GP, utilizing a lot of the products that you saw. I'm sure Kurt's going to be talking about uh, a lot of these uh, instruments and devices. And then we also have our guided full mouth implant reconstruction course coming up in April for those of you who are interested. Again, I want to thank everyone for their attendance. Uh, I think we're going to open up to questions. Actually, we're going to uh, switch it over to Kurt for a couple of minutes. As, as I mentioned okay. earlier, uh, when I gave the uh, my, my little housekeeping, these webinars don't happen unless we get sponsorship. It takes a lot of time and energy to to put together the the course and to make sure we get everyone invited. Uh, I have been thrilled to be working with Golden Dent over the last number of years, uh, not only because they put on this these presentations, but they also uh, make sure that we provide support for people as far as training and, and support after the fact as well. So I'm going to turn the screen over to Kurt Lawler from Golden Dent for a few minutes to uh, to go over their special offers, and then we'll get to the Q&A. Kurt, take it away. Yeah, Lauren, uh, thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, my name is Kurt Lawler. I'm with uh, Golden Dent. Uh, we're a Detroit, Michigan-based company. Uh, we uh, started with the physics forceps in 2007, and we continued on with that philosophy of, of providing simple, um, predictable, and unconventional type uh, dental products um, that clinically work and are a little bit different in how, they're, how they uh, function. So uh, for joining the webinar this evening, um, I'll just kind of mention this first. Um, we, I know we have a lot of regular customers that like to join our webinars, take advantage of the, the promotional offer, and then see some of the new products that we have. And then obviously for the, uh, the educational aspect to learn some uh, new techniques that were demonstrated this evening. Um, we're giving a 12% uh, promotional offer. The code is ENDO12, so it says E-N-D-O, and then the numeric 1-2. And you can uh, find any of the products that were discussed this evening at golden-dent.com uh, or obviously give us a call in the office or we're, we're also always available on the chat feature on the, uh, on the website. So this is a 24-hour deal. Uh, today's the 10th, so we run it through tomorrow the 11th. Um, so we usually give a pretty good offer. It's usually better than any of the email blasts and things we've uh, done over the year. Um, the webinars are usually some of the better specials we provide, and so we do them for a shorter period of time. And so that'll be good through uh, tomorrow uh, evening uh, to receive 12% uh, off. So one of the things we kind of focused on this evening is um, I know we have a lot of regular customers that join our webinars um, each month or every other month or, or as often as they can. And one of the things we wanted to focus on this evening was our new uh, endo products. We've been working on this for a long time. And so uh, as was shown this evening um, through some of these combination cases, we do now have um, the fiber posts, the pins, the endo motors, and the files and various things like that. And like a lot of our other products, they're always supported by uh, educational offerings. So we're gonna have a series of uh, endo for the GP programs with Dr. Nazaria next year. And our first one's coming up, um, it looks like March 19th for uh, next year. 
And you can learn more about that through our educational website, which is uh, amplifiedental.com. And then we'll be sending out some emails uh, on that shortly if you're on our email list. So this is the course we um, just did actually, um, just not that long ago. It's actually one of the first courses we've done in a while, that kind of post COVID here uh, in our office. This was our uh, fully guided course that we just did. Everything went really well and it was a great program. Um, our next one is in April, but this will also be the same room that we do our uh, endo for the GP program. It'll be uh, very hands-on. We'll have the uh, endo motors, the models, and all the uh, materials that were shown this evening and go over the uh, procedures in much more detail. So we already kind of went over this. Uh, I, the, the Woodpecker uh, endo motor has been, it's been really successful for us. We've um, just launched this recently. Um, it has a 30-day risk-free trial. If you're looking for a new endo motor or not 100% happy with the one you have, um, it's really a great, um, great motor. The feedback's been uh, excellent. I think we've already gone through the features in pretty good detail this evening through the presentation. Um, but the latest motor is the uh, AI version, and that's the the one that we carry, and uh, comes in a purple, pink, and uh, white. So if you're looking for um, also just an Apex locator, um, the Woodpex 3 uh, Plus version that we have is also a great option. Um, that's another one that we uh, do have available uh, on our website. So the files, uh, this took us a long time. Um, we we evaluated these um, with many different uh, speakers and uh, doctors we work with, like Dr. Nazarian, and, and we finally found the right one. It is a really great file. Um, of course, it is uh, obviously comparable or uh, similar to the uh, Pro Taper technique. Um, they come in a blister pack, and uh, looks like they're around, they're $24 for the, the six pack. So if you're paying more than that, um, or something similar to that even, I think that um, taking a look at our, our quality and these files, they are, um, very good. The feedback um, has been excellent so far. Um, like I said, we just launched these recently. I know um, some doctors on the uh, webinar this evening probably just recently got their files. I know I've seen uh, quite a few reorders coming in. I know the feedback's been been great. So it's something to take a look at if you're using a different brand. Um, we obviously have the gut approach of paper points and the K files that that match that system. Uh, I'll mention these quickly because I know we've already kind of gone over these, but we do have the fiber post, so that's going to be uh, comparable if you're uh, maybe using Parapost from 3M or Pentron. Um, the pricing is uh, really, really competitive on the, the Classic system. Um, the Mechadont is also uh, a very good system for the titanium post. And then we obviously have the uh, matching uh, titanium metal pins, which are these are going to be very, very similar to um, uh, TMS Coltine. Um, but obviously at a, a much better pricing system. So you can see more information about these on our website. Uh, physics forceps, you know, this this wasn't the main purpose of the webinar this evening. I know we've done a ton of physics forceps webinars in the past, but obviously we have these if you're interested in uh, more uh, atraumatic extraction system. Um, this is a great product. I mean, like I said, this is what started our company in 2007, and it's still very successful today. And uh, we still believe it's the greatest way to um, extract teeth. Um, in a predictable manner and in an atraumatic manner. So if you're interested in those, we're obviously uh, available on the phone to uh, give us a call or if you have any questions on those, we're more than happy to assist you with that. This is the wedge. We went over this a couple of times this evening. So if you're not uh, familiar with this, this is a great pre-step uh, to using the physics forceps or uh, really any conventional type of extraction system. Um, this is an instrument that uh, Dr. Nazarian worked with us to uh, design and uh, we had manufactured for him to uh, assist with the atraumatic extraction process. Um, so it's something you could take a look at. It's, a, it's an inexpensive instrument, but it does help with the extraction process. Um, I threw this in here. I don't know if we, I don't think we showed these this evening. I, I thought, thought they were going to maybe be in there, so I just threw these in here. This is a great um, kit. Um, that we also worked with Dr. Nazarian to design. It's got um, a couple bone shaping burrs, some good uh, tissue and degranulation burrs, a cutting burr and a shaping burr. And so this is gonna be a really nice kit and it's what, something we go over in great detail in our, in our grafting and extraction programs. Um, but if you're looking for something that's simple and all put together for um, your extraction and your, or your grafting uh, cases, this is something you can take a look at that we have on our website. 
Um, I'll mention just a couple more things here quickly so we have time for the, the q and If Again, this wasn't um, a, a really detailed graphing webinar, but the AstroGen Plugs is a really great product. Um, if you're not grafting now, this is a great way to get involved, or if you are already doing extensive grafting, this is a great product that's really easy to use at a fair price. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a synthetic graft and a, and a collagen uh, carrier, and you can see tons of cases and videos on our website that go over this product, um, but it's, it's really inexpensive. It looks like with the promo, it's $44 a plug, and the clinical results are really good. So Allograft, uh, we obviously have that too. I know that was shown quickly in one of the cases. Um, if you do have, uh, or if you are using an Allograft in the particulate or the putty form, um, if you're not already using our Goldoss brand, that's uh, something you could take a look at. It's, it's obviously it's, it's bone, uh, but it is a high quality bone and it's, it has a good price. Yep, you got I'll, I'll skip that because we didn't discuss that this evening. Um, I think this is my last slide here, I hope. So this is the uh, sutures. So we have a, a PGA suture, which is a very, very competitive on the pricing. And then we also have a, a black silk that I know Dr. Nazarian uh, likes for certain cases, which actually is a very inexpensive suture. Um, so those are two sutures we have available. If you haven't um, visited our site recently, that PGA suture might be something that you haven't seen in the past. So I wanted to quickly uh, mention that this evening. Uh, BioViva, this we did show. This is a great alternative to uh, gel foam if you're looking for something to control bleeding. Um, I'm not sure if gel foam is still on a, a national back order. I know it was at one point, um, which made this product even more popular. Um, but this is a great hemostatic uh, gauze or wound dressing uh, to pre prevent um, or control bleeding and then just promote uh, optimal healing. Uh, our next webinar is December 8th. I'll mention this in the email that we're going to send out uh, following the webinar with the replay link. Um, December 8th, it's going to be the immediate implant and how to make it work with uh, Dr. Uh, Tim Kaczynski. Uh, so it's actually a little less than a month from now. You can click on upcoming events and then the webinar section on our website and uh, go ahead and register if you're thinking about it. So I'll leave this up and I'll turn it back over to Lauren so we can get into the Q&A section. And I appreciate everybody's time this evening. Thank you, Kurt. Appreciate it. Are you ready for some questions? Absolutely. And one thing I would just remind people, um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, we have time for about, we, we end right at the bottom of the hours. I want to be respectful of people's time. We normally have time for about 15 questions or so, and we have around 75 here. So um, I'm gonna, I've, I've been going through the questions as they've been coming. I'm trying to combine a few of these together so that we get as many questions answered as possible. Um, one of the things that came up a, a lot was, um, are if you can sort of go over the, the dexamethasone regimen again, as far as how long before the appointment does the patient take it? Uh, you know, is there anything post-op with it? Uh, how do you handle that? Sure, um, the dexamethasone works the best when you give it to the patient right before you're going to do the procedure. So if let's say somebody's scheduled for a root canal and tooth number 20, before I anesthetize them, we'll give them the little um, dexamethasone four milligram tablet, have them take that, and then we'll go ahead and put the topical and then anesthetize the patient. What I found is that it helps prevent any tenderness um, to uh, endodontically treat a tooth. Let's say you over instrumented it or something like that. It helps prevent that. In cases with extractions, it helps um, prevent uh, swelling. Um, and also it, it works well for those patients who, you know, sometimes they just can't open really big and their jaws sore from staying open. It works really, really well. That little, um, container of what was it a hundred tabs is I think it's like about ten dollars uh, it it's uh, I get that through shine the only thing is uh, with the whole COVID thing it wasn't as available because all of a sudden that was like the wonder drug as well um, but any type of anti-inflammatory steroid works really well to help prevent um, the discomfort or the swelling um, after treatment okay um, a bunch of questions also came in about the towel technique. Could you just briefly go over that again? 
Right. So seafoam towel is literally seafoam towel. <laughs> so what we do is just cut it into little um, shapes. Uh, and so in the past, I used to try to put rubber dam and it wouldn't stick to the tissue. I would try to take um, like a collagen uh, tape and try to put that and it just didn't work. And so at one of my courses that actually a doctor that did a lot of immediate dentures said, you know how I prevent a uh, soft reline from getting stuck in the stitches and stuck in the uh, extraction sites is to cut little pieces of seafoam towel, almost like little patches, place it on the tissue, let the tissue wet it, whether it's gonna be wet from just the saliva or from the from a little bit of the uh, bleeding, it sticks in place. And so at that point, if you have to take impressions, if you have to do relines, or if you have to provide uh, impressions for like immediate temporary, or if you're doing the Siltec technique, uh, you don't have material getting pushed into the sockets. Okay. Um, there were probably about half a dozen questions or comments. I guess, I think it may have been the second last case that you showed. Um, and there were a lot of questions about, and I guess there's actually a related question to this about why not, instead of doing individual implants, doing like three unit implant bridges? Um, and there was a you know, related question about how do you determine if and when you're gonna do um, implant you know, splinting versus doing uh, freestanding units. So because I'm trained from Mish, Mish would always say the most distal implants, if there's no vertical stops of teeth behind that, Ideally, you would prefer to have those splinted together to um, go against the lateral forces. So if teeth, uh, if crowns are splinted together uh, and holding these implants together, that's going to be stronger as compared to individual type implants. Now, I will present to the patient that I recommend splinting these is going to be better um, for them. However, there have been times where patients go, well, I want to be able to floss individual teeth. And at that point, as long as the implant is long enough and wide enough, and I feel comfortable that it could take the force as individual crowns, then I'll go that route. Um, but in this particular patient's case, my, my goal was to have an implant per tooth. And later, if the patient wanted to add more teeth, we could do that because of the excessive wear and the force that he put on his natural teeth. I did not want to do three unit bridges on the patient. So I'd rather have one implant um, per tooth uh, and cut it down to uh, less teeth as compared to spreading it uh, longer and doing uh, three unit bridges. Okay, that makes sense. What about um, post-op as far as night guards? Are you typically doing night guards for these full arch, uh, full re mouth reconstructions? Absolutely, it's actually included to protect their investment and my investment. Now, the question is, do they wear it or do they not wear it? Uh, some do, some, some patients that have traveled from far away um, to have this work done, we still have their night guards and they haven't picked them up. <laughs> so it, it depends on the individual, quite honestly. But yeah, okay. uh, we do provide the um, the night guards uh, to protect their investment. Okay. The very first case that you showed, you said that you suspected uh, drug use. Do you, would you typically ask a patient, how would you bring that up uh, if you did suspect that that's uh, what's going on? Oh no, I suspected it and I asked uh, and she had admitted to uh, to drug use. Okay. That, that was so you, a you classic. Do, you, you do ask your patient. Yeah, oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah, well, one of the questions that a lot of these patients or the parents that are paying for it will ask is how long um, are these restorations gonna last? And usually my comment is if uh, the habits continue, they're not gonna last very long. So we do our part, the patient has to do their part. Okay, speaking about the patient, so let, let's say you've got, someone's got a patient that just, one of those really, really anxious patients. What uh -huh. What's your typical regimen of anxiolytics or relaxing meds that you can that you can give um, 
typically by GPs, you know, that, you know, they want to do it safely, but maybe they don't have IV sedation as, as part of the regimen. So what would you normally suggest for something like that? So in my practice, we have a, um, a nurse provider, a nurse anesthetist who provides that. Um, so she's usually the individual taking care of that. So I wouldn't be able to offer um, alternatives to that for the doctors, but there are a lot of great courses um, that provide that. Training. Is there a typical regimen that you would recommend? Like if someone was just was was anxious as, as far as what actual medications you would normally put them on? Uh, like a Xanax or something like that? Is that what you mean? Yeah, um, or nitrous? Uh, I usually will just go to sedation. <laughs> Uh, with okay. that type of, with that amount, so you of don't work, mess around with it. You're you're not, not going to worry about oral medication. Oral you're going, no, yeah, okay, absolutely not. Okay, I think that was probably what the, what the question was. Um, the buildup material. What type of buildup material are you typically using? So that was called the Wago Core. Um, it's essentially the Wago Fill uh, in a very white bleach shade. It's zirconium infused. Um, so it's a very strong material. You do have to incrementally build it up three to four millimeters at a time. So you're not just going to inject it. You're using it um, like you would, let's say, if you're just using composite material as a core buildup. But this is a white opaque, so it stands out. It blocks out any discoloration. Blocks out the um, posts if, let's say, you're using a metal post of some sort. Um, it's offered from Golden Dent. It's a product we worked on uh, to create for Golden Dent. Okay. Uh, what's the material you placed over the extraction site to protect it from the temporary material going into it? That was the seafold towel technique. Okay. Okay. Go yeah. Go back to that one. Okay. Um, and a few of the cases Everybody you showed. Everybody loves that um, one, Lauren. By the way. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the simplest thing works the best. <laughs> yep. Um, in a couple of cases, I guess you showed where you weren't actually uh, restoring back to the molars. Uh, are the patients okay with that? Can they still function without molars? So ideally, our goal would to be to restore first molar to first molar. So in the upper arch, 3 to 14, and the lower arch, 19 to 30. There are people that are walking around with two teeth in their mouth, and they can still function. Is it the most ideal way to function? No. However, we have to stay within their budget. We have to stay within um, different parameters of uh, anatomy, let's say. Uh, what if the patient just doesn't have bone posterior to that? Um, so ideally, we do try to go first molar to first molar. However, in some cases, patients aren't gonna go through three years of grafting um, to try to get um, one extra tooth in, in either quadrant. Okay. The um, the woodpecker, does it have, you know, there's a couple of questions here about it. Uh, does it have like a reciprocating mode? Does, does it have like an auto reverse? Uh, you know, what, what are the, the main features that you like using that, that system? Yes, it has all the above. So you could actually, it's got, and Kurt can talk about this a little bit more, but there's def, uh, def, definitely different memory modes to where you can have it where the apex locator is actually hooked to it and um, uh, it, it actually turns on and turns off as you approach the apex. So, um, Kurt, you guys have some of the video uh, on your website, correct? Yeah, that's correct. And then uh, on that section, the woodpecker section on the website, there's um, a few different drop-down menus. So it, it does show all the pre-programmed uh, programs that are available in the motor for different file systems. Uh, obviously, you want to just double check and make sure those match um, your manufacturer's recommendations. Um, there's auto start uh, on and off. Um, there, there's all kinds of various, uh, you know, features and safety features in that regards um, uh, to the Apex locator. So, um, yeah, there's lots of information to answer your question on the website. There's a couple of videos that go over uh, how it's used, how to program it, what programs are available, and um, couple of videos just kind of showing it in use. Okay. Um, I think that you showed the, the jig in one of the cases. What was the name of the lab that you're using for that? 
So that was the Arrowhead Dental Lab out of uh, Utah. And so with the diagnostic wax up, what they provide you is um, a clear suck down with the holes in it to do uh, depth measurement to confirm that you've prepared the teeth enough, number one. Number two, it gives you a Siltec putty impression of the wax up so that you can fabricate the temporary. And then lastly, it creates a jig so that you can maintain the vertical dimension. In other words, that jig sort of sits on the palate and on the soft tissue so that when you do prepare the teeth, now when you put the monophase material into those areas that you've now prepared, you're always maintaining the vertical dimension. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a couple more questions here. So it, people just want to be confirmed that they know that it's called the C-fold towel technique, correct? Well, I mean, I yep. just called it that, but you don't have to call right. it that. It's just using C-fold <laughs> towel to block it out. And they can get that anywhere, the C-fold towels? Yeah, C-fold towel is just the hand towels that we use to dry your hands. That's right. all. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> I guess this is more for, for Kurt. Uh, is Golden Dent thinking about an injectable core anytime soon? Well, um, I guess the easy answer is no. I, I hadn't really thought of that. No. You know, I guess we're, you know, we kind of start slow with, uh, you know, various things, make sure they're, they're working and people are happy with the products. We, um, we don't always add a ton of products. We, uh, you know, it takes us a lot of time just to test them and make sure we're comfortable with them and they clinically work. So it, it's not something we have in the pipeline now. So it, it'd be a while if we do. When okay. when we were looking at the core materials, uh, Lauren, we looked at a variety of different types of uh, core material and we looked at the injectables compared to packables. And what we found is with the packable, you're able to, uh, eliminate any type of void. Your doctors like to be able to um, pack the core material and um, the the cutting of, uh, let's say, the Wago core, um, it's stiffer and it seems more solid. With some of the injectables, when you prepare them, uh, the burr wants to sort of cut through it a lot easier. So um, the Wago core is definitely denser, I would say, than any injectable that's out there. Okay. For so for those drug cases, are are you typically changing your your regimen? For example, do you do you temporize them for a longer time period, uh, or any other differences? Um, no, not really. I mean, if they if they say that they're clean and the parents are saying that they're clean, um, you know, our goal is to protect their investment. But I I can't, you know, I can't watch them 24/7. So our goal is to get the infection and the decay out of their mouths. Um, if we were if we were opening somebody's bite and they're going to be in a temporary longer for something like that, then yeah, but. I don't see why somebody would want to keep uh, the patient in a temp longer because of the extracurricular activities that they're doing, if they're still yeah. doing it. Hopefully not. Yeah. Um, a few people commented how nice your your temps look. Uh, any polishing tips that you want to impart? So, <laughs> what you do to make them look so pretty? So the the trick of making good looking temporaries is using. Um, Siltec putty impression of the wax up so that you don't have to do a lot of polishing or trimming. That's the key. Okay. So, so the Siltec putty impression, literally when I fill the um, temporary material in there and then I remove the temp out of the mouth, I literally take it out of that Siltec putty impression and I peel the excess flash off. I very rarely have to use a burr to trim it. Okay. Uh, let's just see. For your um, for the wiggle core, what adhesion system are you using to, to keep the core in place? I like the Optibon Solo Plus from Kerr. Okay. And uh, any how much curetti? Yeah. Sixth or seventh generation um, bonding agent would work with it. It's like a composite, okay. pretty much. Okay. Um, how much curetting do you do in your extraction sockets before placing the, the plug or, or the bone? 
as much as it takes to get the granulation tissue out. <laughs> um, another then, question then we or use the burrs, about... excuse me. Then we'll use the burrs. I didn't get a chance to show it in this um, presentation, but uh, I helped Golden Dent design the um, the burrs, uh, the granulation burrs, to be able to remove uh, some stubborn granulation tissue or um, you know, if there's like a cyst or something like that in there. Sure. Uh, one, I guess, final question slash comment. You know, when you make the temporaries look that good, any concern that they're not going to come back because they, they, you know, they they look so good already? Yeah, the the temporaries do look good, but I would say within a three to four week period, they will start to stain. So if the patient has mustard, red wine, cranberry juice, they're not going to look as pretty as what you saw. Um, immediately after. Sure. Well, we're at the bottom of the hour here. So uh, as always, Ara, this was fantastic information. That's why I said the, the reason I love doing these webinars with you and Golden Dent is that we're always getting new content, stuff that we haven't seen before. Uh, anything you'd like to, to say in closing before we wrap it up for the evening? No, I pretty much uh, appreciate you providing this platform so we can um, share the information with our colleagues on something that I love and we all have a passion for. Um, definitely, if you get a chance, try out the um, the rotary endo files from Golden Den. I, I think you'll find they work very well, and especially the uh, wireless handpiece. Okay. Well, typically at this point in the evening, this is where I give out uh, three thank yous. Uh, first to, to Dr. Nazarian for sharing his wisdom with us and, and providing these, this, these great slides and content. Uh, you know, I always learn new stuff. I, I get comments all the time from people about how much they've learned and how much value they put in this. So we, we thank him. Uh, secondly, to, uh, to Golden Dent, as I said, these, these webinars do not get put together on their own. We, we definitely need their help. Uh, I would encourage people to take advantage of the special. Uh, Golden Dent is one of those companies, and I always use this expression, they say what they mean and they mean what they say, meaning this is a fantastic offer. If you call them up next week, it's they're going to say, sorry, that's, <laughs> you missed it. Uh, 24 hours means 24 hours, but I, I would highly encourage uh, you to take advantage of that. And final thanks go to all of you for joining us this evening. We know your time is valuable, and we do our best to – provide good content and, and hopefully you got something out of it. And uh, as Kurt had mentioned, we do these on a regular basis. The next one is, I believe, four weeks from tonight, December the 8th. So all of you who were here tonight will be sent invitations uh, starting in about a week or two for, for that one. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, we, we value your time and we look forward to seeing everyone on future webinars. Good night, everyone.